Hey guys, so for this video, I'm going to be showing off 10 advanced Simpson tricks that you need to learn in Fortnite Chapter 2 Season 7. Now, unlike my recent box fighting tips and tricks video, all of these techniques will not be specific to one theme. That means they're going to include everything from 200 IQ bait strategies, to some peace control tips, to even a secret way to find enemies who are hiding in cars. Trust me, you'll want to stick around for that. Additionally, like I always say in these videos, the format is the exact same. I'll show what the trick is, how it works, when you should use it, and then an in-game example from the pro player or content creator who I learned it from. So make sure to drop a like if this helps you out, and without further ado, let's get right on into it. To start us off, we have possibly the most over-the-top yet effective trick I have ever shown on my channel. Alright, so this is the Martas launchpad trick. I'm not sure if he's the actual guy who made it. I'll credit whoever did on the screen right now. But Martas made this trick famous and essentially how it works, you can either be one unit away from your opponent or you can be two, which is where I think it works best. You're gonna box yourself up. You're going to put a ramp over your head and the edit Martas makes is he makes a left hand and sort of peanut butter peek like this. So take in right now is my opponent. He's gonna be peeking like that, a normal peanut butter peek. Then comes the moment of truth. So this is a little harder than it looks because you need to kind of angle yourself to launch pad in there. If I just do it like this, I'm gonna go nowhere like that. You kind of have to place it while running to the left. So it's gonna look something like this. <laughs> I forgot, you have to put a roof in front of you, which is important because you're gonna bounce off the top. Nobody saw any of that. It's gonna look like this. Boom, you're inside his box and you want- Oh. Oh, that- You're supposed to one-pop him. And before you guys say, Why would I waste a launch pad on that? This is mainly gonna be for clips and for arena. So this is your opponent's POV. You guys are gonna be box fighting. You're gonna be waiting for the shot when- <laughs> <laughs> it looks so funny. The dude just flies behind you. Hello, motherfucker. By the way, you can also do this when your opponent is one unit in front of you. It would be a little weird. I would not recommend it this way because, like, why would you just not go for a normal peek? There's no point of doing that. The way I've seen Martos utilize the kind of one box away is diagonal. So it's technically not really two. The guy will be going for a peek and Martos will do the trick and then get a shot like that. Easy. There's a lot of combinations you have. Send me any clips you guys get of this in game. I'm just gonna show the Martos clip because it is so beautiful and I know for a fact he would destroy Taken with it. Yeah. Up next, we have something a little bit more practical that you can definitely put to use in box fights. This move is called the Ken Beans Classic. You guys might remember it because I did it on someone in my recent video. So how this works is you want to use it anytime your opponent is above you and they're smacking on either your cone or your floor. You're going to be inside the box and what you're going to do is place a ramp to your side and you're going to cut the ramp in half and edit it this way. So you see how this kind of gives me a right hand peek to where Taken is? This is the peak that you're looking for. So if Taken was over here, I would cut the ramp the other way. And if he kept going to the other side, I would cut it that way. You just want to make sure you have this edit in your box with the ramp. You can kind of let them take the cone. It really does not matter. You just want to make sure you have the floor. The floor is what you're going to edit with this little peak setup. So in slow-mo, I'm going to do it really... Stop smacking. You're going to edit the three tiles like this. That way you have the one piece of floor above you to your left. All of this while being underneath the ramp. That way you jump out, go for a shot, reset it like that. Full speed, it's gonna look a little like this. I'm gonna let him take that. Oh my gosh. And you see how I waited until he had his pickaxe out and he was swinging at the floor? That is the key. I'll show it from the opponent's perspective. This is what your opponent is going to see. They can't build their own ramp because you placed your own and you edited it. Edited it. They also can't even see you while you have a right hand peek. And finally, even if they try to do everything they can, play it as smart as possible. When you wait for your opponent to pickaxe it and then make the edit, you're oh, <laughs> oh my god, <goodness>, uh <laughs> That just goes to show, though, how sick the Ken Beans Classic is. Here is me using it in-game. 
Oh, Ken Beads, baby. Third trick is a 200 IQ strategy to outplay your opponents that I promise you will work almost every time. This one is yet another from Martos. Martos is just so hot. I mean, good at Fortnite and uh, good with tricks and dicks. Oh, Essentially, the way this trick works is as you're fighting someone, you're gonna kinda wanna dip around a corner or at least out of view. You're gonna build a box, but then instead of waiting inside of it, you're gonna edit out and just lurk. Then your opponent, oh my god, did not shoot. Your opponent is gonna drop down on your wall thinking you're inside of it. Meanwhile, the whole time you were just chilling either here, you could have done what I've shown in the past, which is you edit a door, get on top, edit it like that, and then you wait on the cone. Or more simply, you wait outside the wall you edited, you make a nice peek, maybe a blueprint, and you get a shot on them that way. There's a lot of different ways to use this trick. Yo, what the heck is this? There's just a dude eating popcorn. Anyways, me and Taken are fighting. Full metal box. I like the addition of the ramp. I'm even gonna put a cone. <laughs> he tried to take the wall. That was definitely not faked. It's probably best in either wood or brick because those build the quickest. This is how it would look in game. You're chasing someone. You see that? Maybe put a high wall. You can start hitting this wall. Yo, where is this guy? <laughs> no. Oh! Check out Nick A30 using this in an arena game and watch what he says after. Does that actually work though? I think that actually works, like hiding outside your box. Like he didn't even see me and it was like see-through. That's an OP strategy, guys. Fourth on the list is actually not a strategy. It's more of a simple tip that you can use with peace control. All about the peace control, ladies and gentlemen. You're gonna wanna use this while you are pressuring someone's box. Never double smack. What the actual trick is, it's something I've seen from Tayson and Noah Riley, the best fighters in the world. What they do is while someone is gonna edit out to either the right or left of the box they're in, the opponent's box, instead of doing what most people would, which is you place a wall and then you box it up, up, they actually focus on the order of that specific build placements. They're gonna place the cones first instead, then place the wall, edit that open for the shot. So this is the older, slower version. You'd place a wall, then box it up like that. It does work, it's not bad, but you're placing these two cones and the walls, which your opponent, if they're good, is gonna have time to actually shoot at you because your blueprint is out for so long. You're placing all these builds. Meanwhile, if you had used the Tayson trick, you would put the cones first, see they edit out, Oh, but the point is that you are only placing these two walls. You don't have to put the cones down, which means you can swap to your shotgun quicker and you have a way higher chance of getting damage off before your opponent. You have more time to reset the edit, to actually edit the cone, to do pretty much anything. And you could use this for other stuff like high walls too. I've seen Noah Rayleigh recently, Noah Riley. He'll place the high walls before the ramp, all because he wants to establish peace control first. It's no longer just about establishing it. In chapter two season seven, it's about who can get it first, who has the better ping, oh God. So yeah, think about the way or the order in which you're establishing peace control. Tayson is going to take it away with a beautiful clip of it. Enjoy. Halfway through, we are going to do the opposite of the last trick. This one is a counter peace control move to get you a free shot. Who would have guessed another Martas trick? As you're ramping at your opponent and you know they're gonna be in front of you, kind of like if Taken was ramping up towards me, any good player is gonna put a wall here. The reason you put that wall is so you're blocking this ramp. They can't get above you. But then what most people would do is either a right hand peek like this, maybe an arch edit, and then establish peace control on the person ramping up. You get a free shot just like this, it would be so simple. Not really anymore though, because Martas has the counter and how you're gonna counter it is you're gonna place your own floor you're gonna edit either the bottom right or the bottom left tile and immediately place a ramp off of it like this you're gonna let your opponent get that wall because you're gonna use this little peak you have for a nasty shot full speed you're ramping towards the guy boom oh I missed a shot how dare you bro there we go <laughs> 
Opponent's POV, this is quite literally what I would do. I'd put the wall here, I'd make the edit, I'd look for the guy. <laughs> You can do so much with that trick. And remember, the whole entire point of it is that you are preventing your opponent from establishing that piece control that I just tried to get this guy taken just. I miss Kazaki. But you're preventing them from getting that floor and cone for an easy shot. Because from their point of view, they're gonna edit it open and try to get it, but they can't. There's a ramp there. They can't place a cone. It's also their floor. Let's see if I can time it correctly. <laughs> I think I saw his ponytail for maybe half a second. <sighs> I'm gonna put a clip of Martas doing it because it is his trick and he does it so, so nice. Trick number seven is the strategy I was talking about before. How you can find opponents that are hiding in spots you would really not think they are. This trick is really straightforward and it has to do with pinging, not your in-game ping, like literally pinging stuff on the map. So with a card normally, this card right here, if you ping it, a car logo little icon is gonna come up, right? This is, I guess, called the bear. <laughs> I didn't know these cars had names. But what Ryu Zanami found out, I love Ryu, go watch his videos because he finds such good tricks. What Ryu found out was if you ping a car with someone in it, the car logo is not gonna come up. So you guys see that? I'm pinging the car, but nothing's coming up. It's just the normal blue marker logo with the meter sign. And the reason for that, like I just said, is taken is in the back seat. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone in the comments right now is gonna say, Who sits in cars? Surprisingly, a lot of people do in tournaments and arena. You get free placement with it, not really any longer. So again, this is the bear. You can see a car logo comes up. But now when I ping it, nothing comes up. It's just the normal 8 meter marker. And that gives it away. If you don't believe me that people actually sit in cars in game and that this will not work, check out Reddit user Nicholas510 using it in game. Trick number seven, which I'm going to count as two different tricks, it is a really advanced way to lock down a slippery opponent. Like I said, this is kind of two tricks in one. I've showed the first part. You basically are gonna build a ramp in your opponent's box like that. And the way to do it, I mean, I've showed it like three or four times by now. You're gonna kind of look down to your left, hold left click and crouch. And you see how that just got built through the wall? I can establish peace control through builds. Kind of what you do after it. I think I advised in the first video to either replace the wall like that, and then you could just monkey classic, bro. You could monkey classic them, or you could exploit in and then edit. Either way is pretty good, but if you go up against a good player, he's gonna edit out the floor. He's not gonna just let you piece him up and take the wall and just stand there. So what the second part is, is after Noah establishes the ramp in there, he immediately drops down, places a wall as he's falling, build this wall, and then piece the guy up inside. So right when the guy thinks he's safe, he comes out of nowhere and drops down, establishes peace control, and boxes him like a fish. So let's say I'm pressuring, I know he's really low, which is why I'm kind of right up against his wall. I do the Noah Riley trick. I immediately drop down. He does too. Oh. Oh, my aim almost let me down, but that was sick. That was so spicy. He knows the Noah Riley. Oh God, I'm gonna drop down. Look, I'm safe, right? Nope. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> I should not be teaching him these tricks. I do it so you guys can get better. And speaking of you guys, I actually got the clip for this from one of my subscribers, my boy, TJ. Go watch his insane clip. Second to last trick is kind of troll, but if you guys can get it to work, it'll make for a really sick highlight clip. I just realized this trick is kind of similar to the Martas, this one, because I've showed like five Martas tricks. How this one works is you're the person who's above the guy ramping up. You have established peace control. You have the floor and cone over their ramp. What most people would do in this situation is they probably edit like this. 
then a reset, or they might go for a right hand peek. They would do some sort of peek with the wall, maybe even the floor. Wink, wink. <laughs> what we're gonna do, this is from Jedi2x and his friend Vital. What they figured out is you can edit the front left tile of the cone up like this. You can run over to the side of it, the diagonal side, edit this corner, and crouch to drop below them. <laughs> Who the heck thinks you can actually fit through there and then drop down on them? And your opponent, this is what they're gonna see. They're gonna see you have peace control. What? That was the slowest normal speed. <laughs> Let me know what you guys think down below. Oh my gosh, I just, I just had an epiphany. Say you go to box someone and normally you would do this, right? And jump in. What if you did this and then boom and you're behind them? Oh my gosh. Peace up, edit. Boom! Jump on him! This might be the greatest trick of all time. Uh, yeah. Final trick, if you go to the item shop and you put in code Jerrian, J-E-R-I-A-N, your peace control will get better. You will get a girlfriend. Uh, I don't know about all that. You'll get better and you'll support me. Use code Jerrian. Overall guys, those are the 10 tips and tricks you definitely want to learn this season. So if you enjoyed the video or you learned something new, do be sure to drop a like, subscribe to the channel somewhere down here, and to turn on my post notifications. Shout out to everyone in the screen for using code Jarian. I appreciate each and every one of you so, so much. Like I always say, use code Jarian, not code It's Jarian. That is some weirdo who stole the code, so don't use it. Use code Jarian. Otherwise, that's it for me, and I will see you guys in the next one. Later.